Hey sports fans, this is Dr. White. Today we'll, we will be learning how to name binary molecular compounds. If you want to follow along in your book, this material can be found in section 9.3 or page 268. So, what's in a name? As it turns out, it's very important to accurately name compounds because different compounds can have very different properties and you wouldn't want to get them mixed up. Take two very similar molecules like CO2 and CO, for example. Now, these molecules are pretty similar, right? They each are gases at room temperature, and they each contain carbon and oxygen. What's the big difference between them? Well, it turns out that these two seemingly similar molecules have very different properties. CO2, for example, is an inert gas that is produced when we burn, off, when we burn stuff like gasoline and wood. CO, on the other hand, is a poisonous gas that can kill you if you breathe enough of it. Because chemists work with these two gases all the time, they need a clear way to tell them apart. They need a clear naming system to make sure that they never get the gases mixed up. CO2 is named carbon dioxide, while CO is named carbon monoxide. In the following slides, we're going to explore how scientists come up with these names. Because they needed to sound official, scientists opted to use Greek prefixes to, to describe exactly how many atoms of a particular element there are within a compound. The prefixes are as follows. Mono means one, di means two, tri means three, tetra for four, penta for five, hexa means six, hepta for seven, octa for eight, nona for nine, and deca for 10. To generate a universal system of naming, scientists also decided that there had better be some rules. The first rule is to make sure that we are dealing with the right class of compounds. Unlike the previous section in which we were naming ionic compounds, the rules in this lesson only apply to molecular compounds, or compounds exclusively composed of nonmetals. Rule number two states that the name of the first element stays the same, while the ending of the second name of the element changes to ide. Okay, so the first element in this molecular formula, NF3, is nitrogen. The second element is fluorine. Now, let's drop the ending of fluorine, put on ide, now we're almost there. We've got three fluorines, so we have to put the Greek prefix tri in front of fluoride. The full name of this compound is nitrogen trifluoride. Let's try it for another element, for another compound. N2O4. There's two nitrogens, so we say dinitrogen. There's four oxygens, so can you guess what the name for the oxygens would be? tetroxide. Tetra is the Greek prefix for four, so we call it tetroxide. Now, notice that we don't call it tetraoxide. That just sounds silly. So you have to know when to shorten up the names a little bit to make the word, word sound better. Now, there is one exception. If there's only one of the first element in the compound, you don't put the mono before it. Take CO2 for example. The name of CO2 is carbon dioxide. One carbon, two oxygens, carbon dioxide. We don't call it monocarbon dioxide. Let's do another example. First element in this molecule is, you guessed it, sulfur. Second element is oxygen. There's two of them. All right, so we're gonna take the name of oxygen drop the ending off of it, put on ide, okay, there's two of them, so we're going to put the Greek prefix di, okay, the full name of this molecule is sulfur dioxide, all right, let's take another example, P2O7, all right, the first name is going to be phosphorus, P stands for phosphorus, there's two of them, so we'll put in the Greek prefix di, second element is oxygen, Drop the ending off it, put on ide. Now, there's seven oxygens. Can you guess what the Greek prefix is going to be? 
hept. The Greek prefix for seven is hept. So the full name of this compound is going to be diphosphorus heptoxide. Now, if you're feeling comfortable with this material, move on to the Moodle exercise that's right below the link on the Moodle page. If not, you should go back and review this video again.